Welcome back to the Money Stop presented by PGR Esports and brought to you by Ron's Race Paints. We are your hosts. I'm Michael Triscaro with my co-host Matthew Baker and Ron Morris. And we also have producer Dawson Wise with us here in the studio tonight. Don't forget to head over to the PGR Esports YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at PGR Esports. Hit that subscribe button or check us out on the web at pgresports.com. There you can find links to all of our social media channels. Give us a follow, and we would really appreciate it. Um, guys, it's Easter. Happy Easter to all you guys here sitting with me tonight. Hope you guys had a good one. But we're going diving right in here because we are in the last couple laps of the McCullough Motorsports Money Race here tonight. Uh, Baker and Ron, I know your guys are tuning in here. Uh, kind of take us through that. Hopefully we can you know, show, show our audience uh, some video from that and see who, see who can take this race here tonight. Yeah, just uh, it looks like. KSR is pretty much in control of this race. You got Mollahan pushing Kyler Wynn here, coming to the start. Pace car is going to pull off, but uh, they've really uh, dominated this latter half of the race on the high side. But Kyler had some issues. His wheel locked all the way full to the left. He had some wheel connection issues, but now he's, oh, you get he's it got, back it, got it back going. He's going to take the green flag here. But uh, look for look for that Dale Cup MBG trio back there, Cody, Matt, and Merck to try and say something about it. Let's go. A little three lap shootout here. Oh, you saw Merck Merc back way off. That's a pretty cool way to start the show, guys. Looks like I'm tuning in now, too. We got John Mulhan there in second uh, behind Kyler Wynn. Yeah, KSR is stacking up on the high side there, but oh. with, with pushing Josh, let's see. It's going to be tough. Kyler may throw a block there. Oh, Parker, Parker and Carruthers, are they down on the bottom now? I get KSR's. Stacked up there, aren't they? Yeah, I don't know why Thomas <laughs> went to the bottom. I thought he would have stayed three with him. I know, I know right? That's crazy. It's a Matt and Matt and uh, Cody going to probably jump high. Oh, they're about to Matt's go now. There goes Nash. Yeah, they're in there the third. Go. Matt's got to go now. There comes the third. There comes He's the high. Go. Side. Huh? There he goes. Going to hunt back down real quick, get some more draft. Still moment, no momentum. Oh, there he is. Oh! Damn, Carruthers went up high fast. Carruthers made, uh, he made a... Erratic move there, didn't he? Oh, they're gonna have something in that third lane, though. That those uh, tents are going out on Devin. Yeah, Devin's got to be getting hot. They're stacked Devin's, up big time. Devin's got to be hot. Mollahan's got to be getting hot. Cody's uh, way off. That's right that's there. probably still cool. He's trying to back all the way up to him. And Nash can give yeah, him three push. by three. Well, that's gonna help. Devin Ray's in the middle, man. He won a race man. the other night. He's on a hot streak, man. Uh, base, base got for, oh, 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 he his ass. Watch out. <laughs> oh, you'll have to show that one back. Yeah, I'm going back. Uh, let's get a far chase. Oh, damn, turn, turn, turn that race chat up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like Devin washed up a little bit, a little bit of net code there, but Devin was. Moving up the track a little bit. He yeah. Comes off, he comes off the white line. He's going up. Uh, Cody saved that truck. I don't know how. Yeah. Well, green white checker now. Yeah. Well, everyone the... tuning in. Fun times here at the uh, Money Race and Scene. Tonight's McCullough Motorsports Race. Uh, we are going to recap a lot for you here in the show. Kind of break down the week um, as it is. Uh, Ron Morris my co-host uh, of Tuesday Night Thunder on Tuesday nights. Uh, one of my favorite series to drive in. I know I, I work with Baker and, and Merck in that one. We're sitting probably one, two, three in the points in that. And, you know, it's it's a great race, Ron. I love how you do it, the format and everything. We're in the Xfinity car, uh, which is my favorite car, at least at least right now. Um, kind of walk us through, you know, Tuesday Night Thunder, uh, what we can expect, uh, you know, going forward. Yeah, same here. I love the Xfinity car. Um, I raced in that race earlier that Kenny put on just because I love the Xfinity car. Um, just, you know, the trucks are great, but we just got a lot of truck races going on. So um, try to do something different there. And then, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time to run these races, as Michael knows, Baker knows. Um, so I came, came up with the league idea because I don't really have to promote as much. You know, once guys get started and they get in there, um, you know, they come back every week. So. But it's a competitive. It's a competitive series. We got some of the best in there, um, so um, it's a lot of fun. But I enjoy doing it. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, I don't make a dime off of it. I do it 
for right. the guys. And I just I, I appreciate everybody that shows out and, you know, put on some really, really good racing. So Baker got the first win, so he's locked into the playoffs now. And then JR, man, JR came through with a yeah. win Tuesday night. That was awesome. I was, I was so glad to see JR win, man. That was, yeah, he's that was, that was he's good. been driving strong. He's been yeah. he's been really impressing me. Right, exactly. Yeah, a lot of guys, a lot of guys have been coming around, man. Um, watching here oh, earlier, sure. Brock, Brock Westmoreland's been running good. Um, you know, I mean, everybody, everybody's getting better. I mean, and it's just because we're racing against the best. You know, everybody's getting better. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, I brought Brock Westmoreland into Team PGR, and I'll tell you, since I did that, you know, the team has been much better, elevated the game, um, you know, practicing green flag stops. I know that's something I worked on in, in league racing over at NSRA, and, you know, without that, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'd be way behind still, and these guys are much better on, you know, those green flag stops, especially you need them in RMR on Tuesdays, but, uh, you know, Brock, JR, Mike Davenport, all those guys at PGR, uh, not even being biased, man. Those guys are on a mission lately. They're winning races, cashing in races, and you know it's it's nice to see you know some fresh blood up there too. Uh, you know, obviously we got a lot of pro drivers in some of these races, so it's always nice to see an underdog story win, and it's kind of what I cheer for week to week. Absolutely, yeah, I love the pit stops. You know, when I do race control, I want to see those green flag pit stops. You know, they they mm-hmm. separate they separate the men from the boys and. You know, I I wasn't very good at it for a while, but I'm getting a lot better now. I can I can make this stops. I, I screw up every once in a while, but uh, you know, between pit stops and qualifying, you know, that's what sets you apart from everybody else. You know, so. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's one thing we talked about before the show is the race control aspect of it, and you know, it's funny because I got both of you guys here that do race control, and now I kind of join that uh, join that process of everything and. You know, it's it's definitely not the most glamorous job to you know right. call a a race in money no. super speedway money race, and we no, got it's not. Yeah, you guys know that. You know, I'm learning that, which I kind of already knew, but I enjoy it. I'm having fun on Friday nights. You know, I know Ron, you you control on Tuesday and Baker on Thursday. I guess Baker for you. You know, how do you kind of navigate? You know that you can't really have emotion towards some of these guys because you got to kind of call it as you see it. Yeah, it's just. It, it's not even really cut out the uh, emotion or bias that you have towards different drivers. It's just, it's easy for me to sit here and just call a race. Cause I can just watch them go in circles and, and disassociate myself from everyone. And uh, really I'll send anyone to the back. I've sent you to the back. I've sent Merck to the back. So um, it's not, it's not tough for me in the beginning. It was like tough watching my team make moves that they shouldn't move make or <laughs> you know i guess it's, it's I think tough. we might be talking to alex hill here maybe yeah yeah alex yeah. the couple moves he made <laughs> he made cody same thing just just racing you know over our heads sometimes and it, it's nice to pull back and watch everyone make those moves whenever you don't have any skin in the game um and take notes it's a it's a it's a big learning experience when you're race control too to see what people do and what kind of strategies they have yeah, yeah I, I mean, absolutely. I think you learn a lot from race control. You know, you get to watch what other people are doing. I enjoy doing it. I can sit right here, you know, with my four screens, and I just I have just as much fun doing race control yeah. as I do racing. You know, it's um, and like Baker said, you know, I've got a lot of teammates that race in my series, but they they get the calls too. You know, yep. if they call absolutely. if they calls it, they they getting they getting direct put on them you know it's the way you got to be because uh you start making calls that aren't that aren't fair and you just run people off and that's you know it's not what we want to do so mm-hmm. you yeah, well, it looks fair. like that yeah it looks like that pace car is going off here we're gonna have our first green white checkered it looks like kyler win is your leader on the high side i'm not sure who's that there on the bottom it looks like a mccullough driver josh, yeah. that's josh yeah, he's been up he's been in the front lately yeah um definitely racing pretty good we're on green white checkers here. I think they'll get it. I think they'll get it done oh, here. Oh shit, Kyler almost got wrecked. Oh. I know. Molly Ham must get in the back of him a little bit. Uh, Molly, driving through him, doing the Molly hand again. <laughs> doing the Molly hand. Oh, the KSR is about to roll here on the bottom. Base is going to get to him. Carlos is going to be pushing through him too. If they can stay lined up, they can both who's get clear. That, who's that went high there? Way in the back. I don't know. Oh, Kyler's got a big run. Oh, base should have jumped well, up. Dawson, Dawson, you get a good vantage point of this, you know, on Monday nights with the Dega, you know, Dega Pro's little guy series, man. You call these races. Uh, you know, what do you what are you thinking here in the last lap, last lap and a half? 
Uh, it's building up to be like one of those races, right? I mean, I've seen this movie a million times, especially with the guys involved. Josh <laughs> McCullough, I mean, he won the championship, you know, a couple of seasons ago. So shaping up to be KSR Josh McCullough. Uh, good to see those guys up front and uh, going to give me a good race to the end here. Yeah, I mean, I was racing last night, you know, with the KSR boys and we, it was all of us and, and, and Josh McCullough up there and fortunately got in a little wreck, only cashed, well, not only, but cashed four out of the five of us. Here we go, last lap. It was going to be official here. Made, made it on the first green one check. No three wide either. I think temps are running out right. on that middle line. Let's see. I think Jones and Merck can hop up. They get a shot, but that bottom will roll once they do it. Josh has got that KSR train behind him. Oh, they're going. There goes Derek. Oh, Kyler and Mullahan got hung out. Big time. Kyler, win your podium 500 champ. He's in the uh, middle. He's going to get both of them down, clear. That middle lane. Ryan could win this race. Why did Cody go down? Oh, man. Yeah, take a look if you're base, right? That's good. Oh, absolutely. You got Carruthers clear, too. You take it. Both of you go now. Oh, 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 oh shit. Oh, Josh oh, dude. Drag race, and it's... Oh, 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 did Josh man. or did Stamper get that? Oh, that Josh so got the win, I think. Did that Stamper was, get it? Stamper got it. Let's oh. go, KSR Stamper. with the win. Stamper got I'll, it. I'll wow. tell you guys what, man. It's it's wow. it's that funny, a... and I'm so happy that we were watching this, because last night, I'll tell you what, I was leading the bottom. Uh, Stamper was pushing me, and him and I got ended up getting turned because Josh made a move to the top. And, man, that's going to be redemption for, for Kenny Stamper, man. He is going to be freaking thrilled after what happened last night. Man, that's awesome for him. I am pumped. How about that finish right there? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we better get some. We better get a picture of that for the uh, social media, at PGR Esports, man, because I'll tell you what, that is a heck of a photo finish. Stamper, Stamper was fourth in the middle of the tribal. Oh, wow. What a, was a good race. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to go try to grab Kenny, man. You guys could recap here this last lap and what happened in that tri oval. But man, we'll we need around. Kenny Stamper in here because that guy's gonna be jacked up, man. He's been racing really well. Yeah, yeah. get him. Holy cow! I really don't know how they called that Stamper. Oh, I see it. It's his left front fender. Wow. I mean, I just I don't know why Based and Carruthers didn't pull up quick there maybe they were oh i see what they were doing see how many ksr are on the bottom yeah they, they stacked up higher. stacked up by four on the bottom it looks like maybe even yeah by four so they're just trying to get all those people in the money positions all right and they did i mean they got kenny uh, in there based thomas I I think the brothers was another one that was out of it cool all credit. Yeah, I'm right getting there. Kenny Stamper in here, man. What a win for Kenny. I am thrilled. So happy for him. He deserves it. He works hard. You know, he's got a lot of bad luck like me, so it's always awesome when a guy like that can get the victory lane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got him coming up. You know, finish talking about Tuesday night. Yeah, keep going on Tuesday night. I'm yeah, waiting for him yeah, to uh, come in the waiting room. We'll pull him in here in a second when we got him. All right, so we go to, we go to Atlanta this week, so a little bit different. Um, it's still super speedway racing, but... Um, yeah, Atlanta's a little tighter. The curves come up quicker. That that tri oval or quad oval um, gives people a fit a little bit. Um, but it's good. And tire wear means a lot more at Atlanta, so it's just a little bit of a different race. It'll be more uh, more skill involved for sure. So look Absolutely. forward to it. I love Atlanta, man. It's it's a great track. Oh yeah, I do too. So yep. Well, I heard the duck. I heard the duck quack. I don't know if anyone yeah. else heard that when Kenny I got here, but Kenny Stamper. Uh, you got Baker here, Ron Morris, myself, Dawson Wise, our producer. Uh, what was awesome tonight, man, is we opened the show with the last couple laps here, McCullough Motorsports Money Race. And, man, it, <laughs> redemption, is that what we're going to call it from last night? Because I told these guys we were in that race and leading the bottom lane last night, and you and I, of course, had some bad luck. But, hey, 24 hours later, man, you're in victory lane and beat Josh McCall. How does that feel? Oh, for sure, man. It feels great. I wasn't really expecting it, obviously, but, man, I'll take it. Redemption, for well, sure. Yeah, man. I mean, you deserve it. You're you're an awesome guy. You you race hard. You race with respect. It's, it's always fun to see you up there. But, you know, obviously, we were going to get into this later, but we might as well get into it now. You know, you got a great team at KSR. You guys have an awesome bond. Spent a lot of time on iRacing together, you know, and obviously, you guys had a strong contingent of cars in that race. You know, kind of walk us through how important that is to have your boys in there racing with you and, you know, how much they've helped you grow. 
Oh, for sure, man. It's it's everything. It's, it's very important. I mean, you it's harder than heck to win a race against all these great competitors, you all and everything. And to do it solo, you know, it's almost impossible. It's been done, obviously, but when you get a good tight knit group of guys like like we got over here, and, and as many of you all do, it it makes all the world of difference. Absolutely, man. You guys had a you guys had like five five deep here on the bottom lane, I think, pushing Josh <laughs> around. So, um, yeah, that was awesome, man. Good to see you win. I, I like seeing uh, different people win. Sometimes, you know. <laughs> We we're talking about earlier with Jr. winning Tuesday night. It, was, it feels good. Mark got a win earlier. That was that was awesome. So uh, congrats, man. Good good run. Oh yeah, I appreciate it, man. And, and it, I'm the same. I like to see different faces to win. It, it's like I said, it's hard to beat these big guys, man. And, uh, oh man, wins are hard to get, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Kenny, it was great to see you out there. Great to see you get the win. Uh, a photo finish for the ages there. That that might be. You know, rivaled that PGR race from a couple of weeks ago with Bowden and Freeze for sure. Uh, we'll definitely get that that posted up because that was, that's a great photo right there. Great win for you, man. Uh, love to watch your race. Love the, love the race against you and also race with you some nights. So appreciate you joining us, man. Go celebrate that victory with your boys. Yes, sir. I haven't even seen it real quick. I do want to thank each and every one of my teammates, man. I can't do it without them. Awesome, man. All right, have fun tonight, bud. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Well, that was your race winner in the McCullough Motorsports race here tonight. Kenny Stamper, Team KSR. And as he goes out, his teammate Trevin Ashranoth is waiting to come in. We're going to get an interview with him before we kind of circle back uh, to the, uh, you know, the money racing scene. We're going to go right to Trevin and kind of bring him and keep this KSR train going here. Trevin Ashranoth, man, how's it going, bud? Oh, man. I'm over You're here. You're a happy guy, aren't you? Living, brother. Living. Living. Living is good, man. Living is great, too, for KSR. You got your teammate, Kenny Stamper, in victory lane tonight in a photo finish over Josh McCall. We were just talking to him, as I told these guys uh, up here, B Baker and uh, Ron. You know, it was kind of redemption for him last night and kind of redemption for me just watching it, uh, him beating Josh McCall out of the line. How How was that for you? Oh, man, I was up here in the booth watching him, waiting for this. And uh, I said, uh, I heard y'all call the train, baby. The choo-choo train was coming right there on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. The KSR train, did it? <laughs> Dawson loves to say flexing the muscle and uh, the train is coming. So that was <laughs> that's what happened right there on the bottom, baby. It sure was, man. It was a great, great race. It was cool. We got to segue right into the race, uh, you know, before the before the last caution, actually. And then, uh, then we got to watch that green-white checkered and... You know, obviously, big fans of KSR, so, you know, great to see Kenny win. And I know you were sitting that race out, but uh, always fun to watch your teammates and especially enjoy a win like that. Love it, baby. I love watching them do great, man. Love love hanging out with them. Love going to these races. We work together so well. Sometimes not, but sometimes. I know how that goes, man. It, sometimes it'd be your own people. That's, that's our slogan at KSR. Sometimes. Your own people. It ain't just KSR. <laughs> uh, oh, I get it. <laughs> yes, sir. But it's great, great seeing Kenny get it, man. He, uh, like you said last night, he, uh, you guys put on a show last night, and uh, it just things happen. And then he got his redemption tonight, so I can't be mad at that. Though. Yeah, well, the the redemption's cool, but you know, with last night getting turned out of turn four, you know, uh, does that like, does it? it make you like want to get back the next day and race right again? Or do you want to take a break? Like for me, whenever I get turned after leading a race for so long or like dominating a race per se, and then, you know, three, four weeks in a row, I get them all a hand into the outside wall. Like, are you, do you like, are you like, let me get you back right now. Like throw up a pot race. I need to redeem myself. Or do you want to take that break? So can I say that it's going to be uh, two things situational and it depends who did it. So, hey, uh, like you said, uh, I think everybody's been Mullahan once or twice in my lifetime now. So <laughs> that's definitely a thing. Um, it's looking like... Uh, including, including all his teammates. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me personally... Oh, man. Man, uh, <laughs> for me personally, situational for sure, man. Some days I'm just like, I don't want to do it. I just, I just want to go home where I'm at, just go lay on the couch, 
and do nothing. <laughs> If you want to eat is... wings, though, dude. You want to yeah. eat oh. wings, though. Like when you're racing, too. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah, that was hilarious in the broadcast. This man's, this man's wings pulled up. It was so funny. Bro, it was a 188 lap race, and I was starving. Man, I had <laughs> I pulled on the pit road. I'm like, they're just going to wreck again. So I pulled on pit road. <laughs> I went I went to the fridge, got me a drink. I saw that I had uh, chicken cheesesteak and some wings, and I was like, damn. As they're going around, because I have the track map up and I'm looking where they're at, making a decision <laughs> what I'm gonna get. Got the wings, and just somehow or another, they saw me on the the camera, and uh, I I got wings in my mouth. Great, appreciate the it. The question uh, is, uh, what what flavor wings? What what's your favorite go to flavor? Dude, depend like situational, right? Uh, depends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one. You're a situational guy. It sounds like. Oh yeah, it just depends on the vibe, man. I had the. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that one was the. Uh, <laughs> Honey lemon pepper. Oh yeah, can't beat those. Oh man, honey lemon peppers. Uh, there was some hot wings mixed in between that. It was like a half and half style that I had only half and half left. But yeah, pop them jokers into the microwave real quick. Hauled ass back over here and got got riding in the back, man. You know how it is when you ride in the back of the line and you're just chilling, uh, yeah, trying to find something to do, twiddling your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Eating chicken wings. <laughs> oh, eating chicken wings, brother. I'm, I think I'm going to make this a thing, man. I think I, I was telling uh, Dawson the other day, or Austin, I'm going to get, like, a burrito next time. It's going to be, like, a sandwich the next one. Like, I'm going to There you go. Gonna change it up. Make it, make it a game. What will Trevor have? Oh, yeah, where's we'll, dinner tonight? <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll put a poll up. There you go. Guess the food. <laughs> like, give me a bowl, bowl of curry chicken or something, man. Just go in the door to town on them in the back. Maybe you get a wing stop oh. truck next. <laughs> Ooh, maybe maybe we bring in the wing stop sponsor for you boss well you're not only a wing eater you're also a two-time pgr race winner uh you're from augusta georgia masters is coming up here in a couple weekends that's pretty cool uh you also race legend cars man can you can you talk more about the legend car thing like how long ago was that do you still do it and you know how how'd you fare in the legend cars man i uh yeah i raced legend cars when i was 12 years old and i'm 27 right now I was uh, up until my 18th birthday is when I stopped. Uh, first things first, racing is expensive. So if you guys decide to oh get into God, a hobby, yes. <laughs> don't make it racing. But if you do, have the funds for it, for sure. Become a race car driver. But uh, I did Legend Cars for a while. Uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway ran in the Thursday night series. I uh, also did the, uh, the Charlotte Summer Shootout series, Tuesday nights and Thursday nights. Um, raced with a lot of the guys that are in NASCAR right now, actually. Like... Uh, William Byron ran some of those races. Bubba Wallace did. Um, raced with uh, Myatt Snyder, Kaz Gralla, um, some of the guys that are in the Xfinity Series now. Uh, Chandler Schmidt was a child. I'm talking about an eight-year-old kid driving <laughs> on the arrows. Now he's up here That's with the cool. best in, in racing and NASCAR. So raced with a lot of these guys out here. Um, unfortunately, the racing bug gets you and you, you run out of the money. And that's that's what happens to most of these good racers out here it's expensive tires traveling engines parts oh all types of stuff man you got to pay for and uh it just wasn't worth spending the money to do it man wish i had the opportunity to but had to get out of it when i was 18 years old ended up getting into a late model a super late model one time that went as well as you think it would go (laughs) yeah so yeah you know you know how that goes uh underfunded and uh I'll take a lap down finish, man. I finished cool. a lap down. Take it. Every pick, whatever I can get, man. At this point in time, I'm just trying to jump into anything. I have a bucket list that I'm going through right now. Just trying to get the next step is going to be like an ARCA car. We're talking to some people right now trying to get into an ARCA car or a Cars Tour race, maybe at like Anderson Speedway or uh, somewhere down here in the south. Yeah, yeah, Florence. Um, that's, that's my stone. Florence. Florence. Yeah, yeah, Florence was the idea that we had talked about too. Yeah. So... We're just finding certain things, man. At this point in my life, I'm just trying to bucket list it. Right. Hey, like you say, you know, you know how you make a million bucks racing cars, right? <laughs> you got to no. start. You got to start with two million. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <start with> two <laughs> million. <laughs> yeah man. Oh yeah. Nah, man. I, I I love your attitude, Trevor. I like, love um, racing with you and being on track with you. You know, things happen and. You don't seem to really get mad about it a lot of times. You're like, hey, man, it happens. Um, I'm, I'm kind of the same way, but uh, 
And then I also love whenever I qualify close to you and I get the pit stall close to you so I can uh, look at your pit board. <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I am yet to miss my pit stall. All right. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I really love, know where it's at. Say that. I, lo I love I love what you guys do with your paints. I mean, you know, I'm a painter, so um, mm -hmm. I pay attention to everybody's paint schemes. I like I like what you guys do with your paint schemes. They look good. They, oh, yeah, know, man. Oh. Just trying to trying to have a good time, brother. That's all yeah. that this is, man. Night racing. Yeah. You're out here with the guys, making friends, having a good time, trying to get a laugh or two, and go racing. Right. That's what it's all about, man. Right. I mean, that's why we started this thing here. You know, um, you know, we're all friends, man. None of us have met each other. You know, um, or some of us have Baker and then went, Baker and Scar and then went to race. I mean, man, I live le less than an hour from you. I'm in Columbia, so but uh, oh sweet, yeah, dude, that's but, like right up the road. Right, man. But yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about, man. The, the teammates and, and the bonds and stuff, you know, um, I know you guys have a tight, tight knit over there at KSR, man. I can just tell you guys have good chemistry. Um, you know, that's, that's why I do this every night, man. Just hanging out with, with McCullough guys, you know, we get in there, we just talk like we're friends, man. And, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, I, I just, I enjoy it. it. Keeps me out of trouble, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. Definitely keeps you out of trouble for sure. Keeps me out of a lot of trouble, matter of fact. It doesn't keep right. me out of trouble with my wife, I'll tell you that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I'll worry true. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> Trevor, real oh, quick. Man. Trevor, real quick. So, I get to watch you guys on Mondays. And, you know, we've talked about this before. But, mm -hmm. you know, you guys have grown a lot. So, so you know, I get to watch you guys. I've seen it myself, but I want to hear it from you. You know, your team has grown so much, even not only racing on Mondays, but you know, I've been able to see it. You know, from season to season, you guys are getting better and better. Speak to that growth real quick, you know, just what you guys have put in, the work you guys have put in to get to where you are now. So I could say top to bottom from last year to now, we're probably a thousand percent better on almost everything we do. And that's with starting off being better people. Um also with the racing aspect of it, we we're probably we spend a lot of time practicing, for sure. During the week, we'll practice. Uh, and then when uh, KSR was putting up the races, or if we get into a couple of R&R races, or we get into whatever going on, Money Racing really keeps us up to date on how things are going in the Super Speedway community. So that really keeps us on our toes to trying to figure out how things work with, <laughs> with the push, with the draft, with weather. Oh, man, there's so many aspects of this that we have to pay attention to, and it's ever-changing. Mm -hmm. It's always different wherever you go, it, whether it's the temperature, the wind, the people, the push, how you're going to approach it, uh, laps, uh, Ronda stages. That was new to, new to me when I started racing this year. Uh, so that's a whole different aspect to it, too. Um, the guys are actually now, we're, we're kind of like half and half. We're doing a lot of the official side. We're trying to get division championships. We're working on division rankings. Um, trying to do road to pro. We're doing that. Um, also, we're in with the money racing side of this too, and that's also trying to compete and stay up there with you guys. Because boy, like you talked about earlier, this is tough, man. This is very tough, and it's tough to stay on top and be on top every single time. One little mistake, and it's over. Yep. All the work you put in getting there. It's gone. Yep. You're starting right back over. And it ain't so, that to be your mistake. Somebody oh. else's mistake. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, man. It's never not that person's mistake. Oh, it's <laughs> right. always yours. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the guys at KSR, man, they work hard. They work very hard. We have, I would say we probably have the best chemistry when it comes to knowing what we're going to, what that person in front of you is going to do. Um, yeah. I, could, I could basically tell you what Dustin's going to do at every point in time or where he's going. Ryan the same well, way. So tell me, you know, when he's gonna run out of fuel. I don't see. I don't know. I don't know about, about them. I'm great at saving fuel. <laughs> but I'll take it. I'll eat it. Yeah, yeah, we got a uh, we got a fuel shortage over here at KSR. We just got so much horsepower, man. It's insane. Just, <laughs> well, he, he didn't have one last night because I know he cashed in the McCall race last night, and you know, I know, I know myself. We were a little short in fuel there, but. I'm I'm glad to see he made it last night because you know that that joke would have kept going. But uh, you know one thing, Trevin, uh, I've had you circled to bring you on the show. I know it's only the second episode, but you know the 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 funny thing is is you know we were gotten to talking one night you and I, and you brought up girlfriends. And you know while Baker and I are sitting over here, 
you know, fending our wives off each and every night to try to race, to do podcasts, to make content. Uh, you're getting broken up with girlfriends, uh, a couple exact, and you know, one maybe cheated on you. Is that is that true? And you know, what's the dating life like for Trevin, who just likes to eye race every night? Hey, brother, I tell you, no questions off limits when it comes to me, man. You come on. All right, so, all right, so I started doing this. Ooh, eye racing in 2012, 2013, maybe. I've been on the game, the simulator. I'm sorry, we've been on the simulator for about. 12 years now and i've been through uh many of your girlfriends yeah a few of them uh not so much didn't like the aspect of a grown man sitting in a <laughs> simulation seat with a let's just say what it is it's a uh, it's it's almost a car and yep. uh sitting awesome, here all night. yep with some grown men every night racing virtually and uh yeah, so uh, I've had a, a girlfriend or two, or three, three, and uh, we've, uh, 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 and yeah, so uh, they didn't like the aspect of that, because you spend more time on here than you do with them, which is surprising, and uh, yeah, so we've uh, we steadily moved on. I've been a single male for the past year and a half now. Uh, prior to that, I was also single. And prior to that one, I was also single again. <laughs> so, uh, iRacing, uh, if you guys uh, want to pay for me a subscription to maybe like eHarmony or maybe a Tinder account. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Hey, y'all just need to hit me up at the Trevin Brand on Instagram and I will take care of it from there. But I feel like they owe me at least something for all the hard hours and work that I put in to iRacing. <laughs> so, I'll tell you what, man, you, you got the smile. You got those white teeth, man. I'll tell you what, hey. those things are veneers man how much did you pay for those bro oh i was uh i paid for it all my life i was born with these jokers <laughs> yes sir hey, man I, could, I would love that. Uh, that that's something man but well i'll tell you what man we enjoyed having you on tonight um as always you're a great dude and love love hanging out with you love racing with you love racing with your team um you know hopefully one of these nights we can head back to the jack shack check things out you know up there it's a good thing coming. Uh, I think some guys will <laughs> get to see what's coming soon. Maybe a little race sponsorship down the road here, bud. But now we appreciate you coming on with us and uh, head over there, celebrate with Kenny, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. Hey, uh, if I can, real quick, I know you guys got a long night. I just want to shout my team out once again uh, KSR, Devin, Thomas, Kenny, Brian, Dustin, Roni, everybody over there. Um, you guys, I love you guys. Always be the best of me. I'm. I'm with y'all till the end. So that's that. And uh, I will see y'all in the Jack Shack later on tonight. <laughs> Thank you for having you on, Trevor, man. Appreciate Good you guys. Me. Thank you for everything you guys do. Thanks, bud. Yep. Thank you, man. Well, that was Trevin and Astronaut, Team KSR. He's a two-time winner at PGR. Great interview. Great dude. Uh, man, God, that was some funny stuff right there. I'm still, my chest hurts from laughing, man. He's a, he's a good dude. Yeah. Great interview, too. Yeah, he's good. Good guy. Real good guy. But, yeah, we're going to circle back. Uh, you know, we started kind of the show watching the McCullough Motorsports race. Uh, your winner tonight, Kenny Stamper, Team KSR. I just had Trevin on. Uh, but, you know, we were starting to talk about RMR Grand on Tuesday nights, uh, kind of, you know, segueing into back into the money scene here. Um, you know, PGR Esports, uh, you know, I'm the owner of that, Baker, uh, co-owner. Uh, doing a lot of work over there on the PGR side. Um, kind of had our little launch day unofficially, officially today actually, but um, PGResports.com is the website. Uh, you could kind of go on there, check everything out. Pretty cool site, uh, pretty easy to navigate. Um, got our YouTube channel there. Everyone can subscribe right on the website. Uh, we do offer services now, so if you want a uh, race brand, we could do race control, we could do broadcasting, uh, event management, we can make flyers, we can do videos, anything like that. Uh, so if anyone wants to go to the website and uh, send us in a form, um, we can get back and hopefully, you know, we could start doing some other races too. We're mainly doing money races right now. Uh, we got uh, John John Ward's Dega Pros on Mondays, uh, Ron's race on Tuesdays, Tuesday Night Thunder. We got PGR, which we just went back to our OG name, uh, the Intimidator Super Speedway Series. And then Jimmy Crow's got a doubleheader every Friday night, Super Speedway Kings. So we're working on those projects right now, uh, broadcasting all those, uh, doing race control and broadcasting and some of the flyer work on Fridays. Uh, but cool website, 
Uh, glad to get that out there. It's gonna it's gonna be a lot more to it once we get you know the SummerSlam 499 in in motion here coming up in July. We'll have the PGR 500. That'll be early uh, 2025, kind of the Daytona 500 of Super Speedway and I racing. So a lot of cool stuff. Uh, it's just nice, kind of legitimizes what we're doing on, on the money scene. Um, points points people where to go. Um, you know, makes it look a little bit more official. You know, a lot of us kind of grassroots guys, kind of kind of how I've looked at it. But now we're kind of taking the next step, uh, doing a lot of multimedia, uh, social media, especially uh, posting our race winners from not only PGR but RMR and SSK. Uh, you know, posting videos. I know Baker's pr working pretty hard on those. So I yeah. uh, just wanted to mention all that kind of stuff. We have you know some good goals, some good vision, and just trying to elevate the money racing scene and. Uh, corralling some of the other promoters since we're all we're all close and, and we want to keep a good thing going so um, it's kind of kind of a hobby of mine but I'm um, kind of taking you know a little bit more serious and seeing that we can make this podcast and and stuff that we do every night you know a little bit bigger for everybody so kind of fun idea there and you know just wanted to bring that up but uh, talking of RMR and PGR you know guys you know Baker I know you're on race control on Thursday nights we had um, this March Madness just ended. You had Kevin Freeze over Cody Eagles in the finals. Uh, unfortunately for you guys up in the booth, it, it wasn't quite the show between those two. Uh, but Colin Bowden, eNASCAR uh, Coke Series driver, got the win. Kind of break down that race for us last Thursday night, if you can. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. That first half of the race was a lot of three wide action, some four wide action. Uh, I saw Ron. Ron was getting hung out left and right in that be that beginning part of that race. He went over the radio. He's like, "Man, I can't make one move. Y'all just go the other way." <laughs> I was, yeah, I was laughing. That was that was some of the most fun I had race control in that beginning of the race. And then we, we got the caution bug there late, and uh, we always say the caution breeds caution. So it was a good race. Uh, you know, the move that that Colin Colin was very patient. He wasn't, you know, yeah. When he first mm -hmm. came in to to PGR, he he raced like he could bully everyone around and he tries to bully everyone around and he just has realized that he can't do that unless he has help. You can't just right. do it on your own in these trucks. And uh, I really settled down and was able to get his first win. But I mean, it was all set up by Garrett uh, almost self clearing himself off of Logan. I mean, I don't know how Logan didn't just turn his, turn his ass to be honest. He just, he got to his left rear and then Garrett goes to pull down and, I mean, if I'm Logan, I'm staying in it. I'm, I'm, I'll turn the field. That wouldn't have been called on him. That would have been Garrett's fault. So, right. But I, I, it, it was, it was nice to see Logan have a cooler head there. It got him out of a money spot though. But uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. But when Kevin and Cody, I mean, Kevin and Cody wrecking really changed the outcome for both of them because Cody had right. a bunch of damage and and Kevin got turned towards that back half of the run. I thought he was out of it. And I mean, they finished within a position. They still, yeah, they still finished, they finished one right behind the other. Yeah. yeah like 29th and 30th. Yeah. Right. $400. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Kevin, Kevin was, I made a joke after the race that, you know, how's it feel to limp around a junk car and win 400 bucks. It yeah. probably doesn't happen often. So right. a cool little thing we did uh, March madness every year uh, starts at the tail end of February runs through the end of March. Um, Cool event this year, like I said, won by Kevin Freeze. Uh, definitely an annual event. That was the second one. So it seemed like everyone enjoyed the March Madness. Um, I did for sure. I know I bowed out there in the second round, but always a fun little event. But coming up here uh, for PGR, at least uh, this week on Thursday night on April 4th, we got the PGREsports.com 50 from Talladega. It'll be in the Xfinity car. So kind of going to that car. And we're going to have, what, 40, I think 50% fuel. So if Dawson, you could show that schedule. We're going to run a, another Q2. Here's our Q2 schedule for 2024. Uh, uh, actually, it's a 14 race slate. We got a double header on April 25th. Uh, I know when, I know Baker, you're you're pretty excited for that April 11th event in the uh, Arca Menard series. Yeah, I love the Arca car. Uh, Arca Gen 4, whatever you have it, same fleet package, but it uh, takes a lot of patience to, to be up there, um, to be in these cars. You can't push through someone like the trucks. Um, it, it's a, it lifts the back of the car. Up. <laughs> lifts the back of the car way up, which is it's awesome. I I, I yeah. love love that car a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm I'm excited for that race. I'm excited for another uh, Gen Seven race at Dega. Um, a lot of good 
good things on the schedule, especially that Atlanta race. That's another interesting one. Uh, you got the team draft event coming up as well. So a lot of cool stuff on the horizon for us. Yeah, you'll be a, you'll be in that car on April 18th, though. I'm going to sit that <laughs> one out, head up into the tower. We're going to put you in that, that next-gen car. You know, you got a way better shot, obviously, than me to, to win that race. We're going to, like you said, head to Atlanta on May May 9th, where RMR is going to be on Tuesday night in the Xfinity. Should be a lot of slipping and sliding, Ron, I, I think, coming up here on Tuesday night at Atlanta. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were talking about that earlier when you stepped out. Oh, yeah, tire wear means a whole lot more in Atlanta than it does Talladega, Daytona. Oh. Yeah, and then that quad over gets a little tricky for some guys. So, you know, but it's, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think pit stops oh, are going to you know, you know, separate people. If we end up making green flag pit stops, it's hard getting on pit road there. So, um, it'll be interesting. It'll be, um, it'll be a good one. Yeah, we got that. We got a Gen 6 race at Daytona, uh, the second annual team draft, which Baker talked about. That's going to be pretty cool. I think this time around we're going to take um, not the not the top tier pros, not, not any guy that picked before, but we're going to slot in maybe even like a Trevor Ash, Ashronoth and, uh, you know, like a Jeff Merck, some guys like that, and we're going to, you know, pick them from there. That should be a good one. We'll try to lock in 48 drivers drivers for that night. And, you know, for, for the first time ever, too, we got on – June 13th, we're going to throw back. We're going to go to those 1987s, probably put Baker back in the car for those two. <laughs> uh, I have no experience in those, so I don't know if we want to see me out there. But definitely a cool schedule, uh, definitely diverse. Uh, we're looking, you know, not so concerned about, um, you know, car counts as we are just having fun. I think Baker said it best uh, a day or two ago, you know, this is for fun. And uh, once we start, once we stop losing sight of that, you know, then we're going to lose lose what we got going on. So. I know at PGR here, we're looking to have some more fun and uh, getting in different cars on different tracks and, and having some fun. So I'm looking forward to the, the schedule here, I know, in Q2 and um, lots more to come, too, with PGR Esports in, in the future and Q3 and 4, kind of already starting to work on stuff like that. So um, getting, you know, Baker, I think it was Baker's idea of um, maybe, you know, running a little championship run. A little bit different than yours where we're, you know, taking an extra dollar uh, per race, which we're going to start doing here. Uh, but that extra dollar, which is going to be cool, it's going to essentially go into a PGR esports fund. Um, you know, we do have some expenses now. We're going to try to eliminate a little bit of them, um, you know, that stuff, anything that directly benefits the whole money community. But with all the excess money, we could essentially put back towards the drivers for, you know, the SummerSlam trophy belt. Um, we could put it back for race bonuses and, uh, we could we could run. Hey, if we go to Q3. Uh, we could put to, like a couple hundred bucks together and and you know keep a point system. And at the end of those 13 races, we have a champ. We can pay them that. So uh, something we we haven't really done here. We haven't really seen too much of in the money scene is you know trying to gain a bankroll to be able to do things for the drivers. You know even like you know getting some merchandise made and you know giving sending stuff out to the race winners. So. Some cool ideas, you know, we have here brewing. Um, I'm excited to kind of get that next chapter going here. Uh, a little bit different, you know, with you, Ron. You're you're doing a full on league with a with a playoff system and a, you know, the knockout rounds and stuff, which is which is awesome. I, <laughs> it's awesome. But we talked about it on the first show. It's all crazy at the same time. So, no doubt, gets crazy. <laughs> and yeah, it gets a lot, a lot of a lot of money on the line. So you get you know people get a little a little sense of urgency, I guess. But it makes it good too. <laughs> yeah, it does make it good, man. It definitely makes it good. So we'll kind of dabble with that at PGR Esports a little bit. You know, it'd be nice to reward uh, you know, a driver or a few drivers for, you know, a 13 week stretch, which is quite a bit of money racing at that point, and especially with the fields that we do have week to week. But you know, one thing on my mind, um, I know is the uh intent wrecking. I know we brought up Logan York a little bit earlier, keeping his cool. Um yeah. You know, but we've had quite a few drivers here in the last couple of weeks in the money scene lose their cool. Uh, and it all kind of culminated Friday night um, in uh, SSK where Logan York was being a little pest to the McCullough Motorsports guys in the race. And uh, the Kenny McCullough, and I'll tell you what, Kenny's a great guy. Uh, it's not something that Kenny would ever do. And he, he wasn't malicious with it, but, you know, he, he you poke the bear too long and the bear's going to attack and, you know, Kenny fenced Logan pretty good there. I'll actually have to bring that video up in a second. But, you know, we're something that, you know, me as a promoter, now even a race controller, guys, and you guys can allude to this more. But it's the one thing that, you know, and I, I spoke to Kenny and I said, it is, 
I understand why he did it. Yeah. Something I might have done too, because right. you know you only could take so much from somebody, and it happens in real life. And you know we need to see it sometimes, but unfortunately we do have to, you know, as promoters and controllers, kind of crack down on that stuff because you know one day it could greatly affect the outcome of a race, and that's obviously something that we we don't want to see. So you know, as two controllers themselves, and you know, it's one of those things that sucks, but you got to do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I you know, I don't like having people out for a week or suspending them for a week because they one they contribute to the pot and two they're usually like people that we get along with uh you know we, we have malik that we're suspending for a week after his intent wreck uh, garrett coming to the line it may not have affected anyone else besides him and garrett but uh we're just trying to set the standard but um and and two it's just it's just we get you got to set a precedence it doesn't matter who it is um you have to lay down the hammer sometimes on people whenever it comes to intent wrecking, because it's, it's just going to create a toxic community and we don't want that. We want people to learn from their mistakes, you know? No, absolutely. And, you know, I think that's like Jimmy and I had a conversation and, you know, I think, you know, we came up a little conclusion with a little bit harsher punishments kind of going forward. And like I said, it's not something I really love to do. It's just, I think if we can, you know, keep that thought in everyone's mind, you know, just going forward to, you know, kind of keep it cool, you know, hash it out after the race is, is kind of always the better thing to do. Kind of pulling up that, that video now here, the last lap uh, from the other night in SSK. Uh, Logan was kind of on the outside here, or inside actually of uh, Vondell and ended up going up and tried to come back down. And unfortunately, you know, Kenny just had enough and they were kind of getting into it earlier in the race. And Kenny turns that wheel right, fences Logan. And I think that was a little bit relief for Kenny. He just kind of had enough and, you know, the good guy that he is, had a conversation with us. Uh, you know, believe it or not, he actually spoke very highly of Logan and said, you know, I, lo I love the kid. I like the kid and he's a great racer. It's just, you know, sometimes you got to rein the kid in and, you know, we're hoping to, uh, you know, get Logan to maybe think differently. And cause I'll tell you what, if that kid can, you know, keep his cool and, uh, you know, keep keep a better energy and a better vibe, you know, the sky's done for him. Far. He's won some races, so. Right, yeah, the car. Absolutely. So, had some intent wrecks the last couple of weeks. Hopefully, we can clean those up and and move past those and have have some uh, better after race because it's it's you know you could, as a controller you you could see the whole race unfold and everything's going good and you're like oh this can be an easy night and you get to the last lap and something happens and next thing you know you're on you're on here for a couple hours and having to discuss and dissect everything that happened and that's not too much fun so. No. But I know Ron Ron brought up uh you know another point uh before uh we started the show tonight about you know money racing in general. Had some conversations with promoters over the weekend, some good, some bad. Um, but you know, it's something that's kinda always on everyone's mind is is there too much money racing, too little? Uh what to do to fix it? Should we not fix it? Um, you know, I don't think there's an easy answer to that. Um me personally, I'd like to see a little bit less. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, like Baker said too, uh, in, in conversation, you know, not everyone has to do every race either. So, you know, I just want to see healthy fields, uh, in the premier races and, you know, hopefully, you know, some of these guys that come in and out, you know, understand that, you know, they could just pick a couple, pick or choose a couple, you know, we don't want anyone getting burned out, you know, cause once we get people burned out, you know, then it's, it becomes too much. So I know Ron wanted to touch on that a little bit, you know, and see if we can, know work a little bit better and you know make our products better so yeah i had oh i remember back in the day where we had pretty much friday night <laughs> was it ian martin was the first person i raced money races with and we started out as it was a uh, street stocks and then we started racing trucks but uh you know you really look forward to friday night you know you didn't have money racing every night and did a lot more officials but i mean i'll be i have to admit i've enjoy having a race every night to race in if i want to um it does get expensive especially when you're not cashing but um sometimes i do feel like it gets a little bit watered down you, you know it's kind of like disney world you know if you went <laughs> three times a year for your whole life it wouldn't be nearly as much fun as when you go once every couple of years but um but you know i was just throwing around some ideas and um you know one thing i was thinking uh east race go-karts we had you had the same cart you could run amateur or you could run what we call the stock or pro 
and uh you know if you you could run amateur you could run them both on the same night which i think if we do this for money racing we allow people to run both um but once you won a stock race for a pro race you cannot run amateur anymore you had to move up to that class so it kind of kept a little bit of a lower division for the guys that you know weren't quite as good and you still had a chance to win i mean you could win amateur you could just keep running amateur um I think they did start a rule like if you won like eight amateur races, you had to move up a stock or something like that. But um, I think it's something we could benefit for money racing. Uh, you know, I'd like to see what other people think about it. But you know, maybe run two night, two races a night. You know, ha- let every promoter have their night. Run two races. You know, run one the fir- first race like twenty five laps, thirty laps, whatever, no pit stop, and then run a- another race and have you know fifty laps. And that's another thing I. I like the longer races and, you know, we're getting all these little 25, 30 lap races, not nearly as much fun to me. Um, but, you know, run two, two events, run a short one, you know, and then run a longer race, a low entry fee race, high entry fee race. Um, and if you want to run both, you can run both. But if you win one of the, you know, pro races or whatever you want to call it, you can't run the amateur race anymore. So, you know, I think that would open it up to some of the guys that don't catch all the time. It's kind of like the little dog races and like what Jeff was doing with the weak sauce. Um, I, I think it would help a lot with, with the community, you know, with people that are not catching very much, you know, <laughs> like myself sometimes. I, don't know. <laughs> I just I have, I have a streak of bad luck. I'm usually up there, but can't finish the deal. But I just like to know what people think about it, you know, chime in on the, on the discord people are out there listening you know is it a good idea is it a bad idea i don't know yeah yeah and i mean you know it's it's one of those things where it's a, it's a tough discussion you know promoters are going to do what they want to do you know at the end of the day you know even if we've got you know a couple of us and created a better system i, I kind of like that idea myself you know it's it's hard to control everything i don't think that's what i'm trying to do or any of us are trying to do um, you know i just like to see a little bit better system at least for pgr as well yeah. um you know i've, I've stayed consistent with you know kind of letting anybody race but you know sometimes that opens the floodgates for you know like we had kind of last week with a couple young kids in the field and you know it's hard to hard to know who these people are that are coming in and you know it it, and there's there's no like feeder system you know this isn't like you're coming up through arca trucks in real life xfinity so you're you're you know you want the donation you know from people too but you also you know want the, want the racing to be as good as it can be and you know and, and that's not to say that the the top dogs the pros aren't causing a lot of stuff too on the track because they are so you know you just never know what you're going to get at the end of the day it's 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 a lot of human human error um i think i mentioned it this week that you know it's 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 on the drivers too at the end of the day to to drive these cars in the, in these races and you know, be respectful of everyone around them to know their abilities too. I mean, you know, I'm not the same ability as a Malik Ray. So I have to know my abilities in certain races and, you know, make moves uh, within myself uh, to try to advance my position. But, you know, you're on that last lap and there's only going to be five or six guys cashing out of 40 something, you know, you can't just push through somebody to get to the front. So, you know, the cooler heads, you know, usually prevail. Unfortunately, you know, the money is there and I think it's going to be always a, an issue, but, you know, it'd be nice if everyone could think a little bit more before they do things and, you know, we could get to some cleaner racing, but, you know, I'd love to see a push for, you know, more organization, Ron. I know I'll work with that, you on that a little bit and, you know, hopefully we can, you know, maybe even PGR can put on an extra race a week or something in the future here to, you know, bring up these guys. So um, right. be nice you to see. Remember, you used, you used to run two races on Thursday night for a while, but but yes, maybe yes. maybe you do maybe you do that. You know, since the Thursday night race does have, have such a large field, anybody new has to run one of the yeah. lower races yeah. first, for like one or two, right. where you can at least see how they race before you let right. them jump in a forty car field with big money on the line. You, you know, so it's yeah, thank you for the discussion. I think we can benefit from something like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, just just like I say, we're we're always looking to improve the money racing scene. Uh, you know, there's guys in and out all the time, but we still have a great core base of money racers, guys that are kind of going to come out every night and do it because they love to do it. Um, you know, I wish I could race more, but <laughs> pretty busy now on the back end of of the PGR Esport thing, and you know, doing this podcast, doing multimedia stuff like that. Now, uh, I enjoy you know racing when I can. 
uh, for me, any series really is fun. So, um, you know, once you get back to just having fun, I think that's when, you know, everything changes. So, you know, you gotta, like, I think I said too, you know, it's 95 of the. Uh oh. We lost. <laughs> we lost Mike. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back in a minute. <laughs> there he goes. We lost your mic. Well, we did. Uh, yeah, go back. Uh, it's Re all good, man. It's all Re good. Re rewind, rewind yourself for about 20 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> uh, that's all good. It, you know what? We had a little technical difficulty with my camera the, the first time around. So yeah. I think once I hit like a 40 some minute mark on the my phone here, you know, it kind of wants to go south on me, but it's all good. Um, you know, I know I know tonight we had the unusual but uh NASCAR uh cup series race at Richmond. Um, you know, they started on those rain tires tonight. I know Baker and Dawson got to watch a lot of the race. Um kind of cool. Uh I don't know if I've seen the race, the the rain tires yet, but I know they started them tonight. I wasn't able to catch most of it, but Kind of cool Easter Sunday at night under uh, Richmond under the lights, Baker. Um, you know, I think it was what Martin Truex Jr. was the winner tonight. No, <laughs> Martin Damn Truex it. is the one who got lost. Yeah, Martin Truex. It was about, the they were coming to the white flag and uh, Bubba turned Kyle Larson got loose and then Bubba got into him. Larson stayed in like six and then Bubba had a terrible pit stop and got to like 16th. But on the restart, uh, Hamlin jumped the restart. I don't know how to. Put it any other way, he jumped the restart in the restart. He wasn't even in the restart zone. He was the leader who controlled the restart. Didn't get to the box. Started rolling and fired off early. So Truex wow. is already pissed at him because he used him up. Uh, and then once he used him up, Logano got to Truex's inside. And Larson and Truex went at it. But Hamlin was, was scotch-free after, like, turn three. Well, I must have missed a lot because I was trying to tune in there at the <laughs> end. It looks like it was Martin Truex was going to – uh, walk away with it so yeah, yeah it's yeah. crazy because yeah i didn't i did not know that news to me but yeah it looks like denny hamlin i know you're not the biggest fan of denny hamlin nope. you know it's, he, he's a he's definitely um doesn't uh, yeah, i thought it was interesting how they started out with the rain tires because you know other than having a delay i thought that was awesome that's a great move by nascar to do that yeah I thought it was also interesting that they didn't bring windshield wipers on the course. <laughs> yeah, how are, you gonna, how are you gonna have a rain package but no windshield wiper? Right, in your right. right. Like, like, oh, we can't see anything. It's like, well, if you had a wiper, maybe it would help. You know? So exactly. I mean, it's, why why have the rain tires there if you're not gonna have the wipers I, and the tail lights and the flaps and everything? But it was cool to watch all the dirt trackers were were oh, moving man, up right. the field. Haley, I think right. Haley gained like twelve or fourteen spots. I wish they would have. I wish it would have kept raining. Barry right. and Maybe. Maurice also, the short track hey. modified guys. Yeah. Fared really oh, yeah. Well on that. yeah. Yeah, but Josh Barry. Man, Barry yeah. looked great. Oh, man. If he, if he had that wreck, he, had he that... came right back through the field, man. Yeah. Was... If, he, if, if he didn't have, because he had a bad last pit stop, I think. Well, he had a bad last, like, entry into pit road and blew the corner and everything and still made his way back up to, like, eighth place. It was... Yeah. It's good to see uh, Stuart Haas bring in some good equipment, at least. Oh, man. Yeah. They. We're struggling last year. <laughs> so, yeah, they're struggling really, really bad last year. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little worried. With, I mean, I'm a Chevy fan. I'm a little worried with Chevrolet. I think Chevrolet's got to get on the ball. I mean, I know Hendrick's doing okay, but you know, um, I just Toyota and Ford have passed them. The yeah, whole Chevy thing. Chevy started off the year strong. It's just Toyota. Toyota's got a lot better downforce than anyone else, so they're going to be really, really fast on the short tracks. Obviously, it's, I mean, they just won the race, but right. uh, Fords, their qualifying speed's good, but after that, they just fall off a cliff. I don't know what happens in their race pace; it's so bad. But I mean, Chevy, you know, the Camaro's gone after this year, so they yeah. didn't put any time, you know, any kind of effort in to improving that car, no. which I guess, but you know. What are they going to do? I mean, I haven't heard anything really about no. what the next car is. They're you know, already working on it. It just kind of frustrates me as a Chevy fan. That yeah. All they've I really had to this point is rumors. I mean, I've heard, you know, you've heard Honda, you've heard Cadillac being a GM brand. You know, I've heard that's where they're going to the go. The Caddy would be sick. Yeah. The CTS. Uh, yeah. That would oh, look yeah. cool. That's what, yeah. that's what I've heard. Again, nothing official, but right. it's all rumors. But Chevy well, was the well, only one to not make a body change this year. No. Ford went right, to the right. Dark Horse. Toyota and went to the new Camry. Yeah. And 
They both got better. Chevy stayed the same. Well, that's what. So Chevy is the standard for the next gen. That was like NASCAR came out and said that they were the standard for it. So I don't know. Just uh, I think maybe they'll. uh, I think I think it's either going to be the Chevy Cruze, which is what they were talking about, because they can't do the Corvette. The Corvette just yeah. Right. It wouldn't work. Two arrow, right. It's not well the arrow, and then it's it's not affordable to everyone. That's the, yeah, yeah. the main so point. The whole, right, it's against the whole standard of right, the yeah. stock. Right. Right. Yeah, like a Mustang's affordable. For well, people. my here here's my thing with Honda. It's 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 Red Bull is coming back. You remember Red Bull yeah. racing? They brought Toyota in. Yeah, yeah, they did. So I think Red Bull because that's what they were running in F one. I think Red Bull racing is coming back. Well, they're, yeah, well, they're, yeah, well, they're trending. Well, it's because NASCAR is trending back in the right direction, and everyone, like, I don't know, a Red Bull came into the sport at the wrong time. It was when the sport yeah, started dying, right? right. Um, and they had fast cars. They had all the support behind them. They just didn't care enough because they weren't getting the viewership that they wanted. And now they're seeing that the, the I mean, the stands are packed tonight, and it was yeah. raining there, and they, they still did pack the stands out. So it's good to see everyone pack it. I mean, Bristol, Bristol was. The busiest I've seen it in a long time. I tell you that, Dawson, you were was, at that uh, race. Yeah, I was at that race, and it's the biggest crowd. I've been to Bristol six or seven times now. It's, it's one of the biggest crowds I can remember for a March date by far. Yeah. I mean, it was great crowd, and I mean, they got to see a, a heck of a race. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I wish they would have brought that tire to Richmond. I was hoping yeah. they did. <laughs> right. I love the dirt track, but I was so happy to see it back. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, they're they gonna race on dirt, go to Eldor, go somewhere else. To, you know, Bristol needs the two, the two regular, two concrete races. Well, yeah. especially I, after I the, the race they had there in the fall. I mean, I was at that race too, and that race was so entertaining. You know, from a racing standpoint, and obviously you know, the storyline late. You know, Hamlin's getting run down by Larson. They're racing and racing through live traffic. I mean, yeah. that race was so good that when they announced they were they actually announced they were bringing the concrete back that weekend before the Cup race. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad to see it back too. I love the concrete, yeah. and uh, now that they have this package, whatever they, I think they brought the intermediate package this year. So, yep. whatever they did there, uh, that, that produced yeah. something good. Yeah, yeah I think that really tire they they need to go just a little bit, you know, the tire make it wear a little bit milder, I guess, you know. Yeah, it but needs to be a little harder. To but tire. where it is, where it is, is close though. They, well, it, close. It, that was an it, awesome race. It didn't help that the the track wasn't taking rubber at all. I mean, it didn't take. It was anything. not. It's because they put down the uh, the resin, resin. Uh, on the yeah. on the track because they thought it was going to be raining. It was supposed to rain, yeah. right? For really about yeah. the whole week leading up to the race, and then yeah. when we got to race day, it, it never rained. So obviously they had the resin down. They expected to use rain tires and never had to use rain tires, so the track never took rubber. Yeah. And another thing that nobody's bringing up is they were talking about how the track conditions weren't that much different from the last time. Well, the last time that track had been covered up for dirt and dirt for like eight months or six months before going there. Yeah. That, I think that affects a lot with the temperature of the track and the moisture and all that stuff. That thing had been covered up by dirt. No, for sure. You know, I mean, you cover, you pull, pull some dirt off the top of concrete and it stays cold for like the longest time because there's not been sun. You know, nobody's bringing that up, but, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, it probably changed it completely. Yeah, it looks like Mike's got internet issues. He said we can close whenever, but. Um, well, yeah, so we got little guys tomorrow. We'll be uh, on the broadcast with that. Will we be Dawson? Uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. I hated to miss yeah. last week. I know Logan got the victory lane, so yeah. he, he's locked in. What a fun series that's been, man. Uh, yeah. Fun season so far. Uh, the last few weeks, I mean, have everything you could ask for. You had a pitch strategy race, and you had the darkness, which was a whole <laughs> different issue. And then, that was something. <laughs> and then you had, you know, the race a couple weeks ago had just a little bit of everything in it. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, I could, right. you know, I could sit here and talk about those guys for, for a while. A lot of those guys really put on a show, Trevor included. I mean, we had him on earlier. Yep. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. Hopefully KSR can uh, turn it around and make sure their field strategy is good and go for the win in that one. Uh, I'm going to win. I'm gonna try to win that one tomorrow now. Come on. <laughs> it's, it's getting later yeah. in the season. We're getting to the point where guys are going to have to get desperate. They want to lock in. Only only a certain amount of spots, 20 spots, I think, available this season. Yeah. So. yeah. It's a good, good week of racing ahead of us. Tuesday with Atlanta, it's going to be a lot different for us. Uh, we love that Atlanta race, and we've adopted it to PGR. We'll be running it this year. And then we got the First race of Q2 for, for PGR. Uh, Going to be a lot of fun on Thursday. Make sure you guys. Well, we got Thursday. In. Xfinity. Should be Xfinity, I believe. I, I think know. it is, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, it should be Dega Xfinity. So another fun race. Uh, 
I will be race controlling that one. But a, a good a good week ahead of us. We had the 500 with the Automatics 500 there. Uh, Kenny's going to be starting up his uh, Little Dog Big Dog series uh, at the end of April, I believe. Yeah, April 420. 20. Yep, April 20th, 420 blazed up. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we look forward to talking to you guys again. Hopefully we get to uh, do this podcast next Sunday. Talk about all the racing events that we have. Maybe we'll have some live shots after a couple crazy finishes. But tonight we got to see a good finish with uh, Kenneth getting some redemption there and Stamper taking the win. Uh, talking to Trevor and talking about everything we've seen these past couple of weeks, the launch of the, the new website. And uh, just really looking forward to another good week of money racing. Yep. Exciting stuff. Yep. Yeah. We'll uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks for hanging out with us. This has been the Money Stop Podcast. Yep. Peace out.